and uh, we are here to understand the need in the market that why we should be learning azure right cloud is one thing and azure is one of the provider that we are going with right now the thing is <clears throat> initially whenever we need to start our business requirements right definitely we need to create hundreds and thousands of the resources for an example a web application now where you will be deploying a web application probably on a server now the problem is that whenever you are bringing any particular hardware on any particular server on which you are hosting a web application you know guys that hardware has a life cycle for an example just take an example of your laptops your servers right and after five years every 10 years you need to replace that particular hardware now think from an organization perspective which is running in multiple countries all across the globe and how many resources they have to create on daily basis or let's say over the years what will be the cost if they need to replace the entire hardware how much time consuming it will be the process let's say if a company need to make a site up on a particular location now definitely guys it's a very time consuming process the compliance requirements that the resources that you have created and the physical connectivity between them connecting one data center to the another or let's say accomplishing the connectivity all across the regions now guys the reason is why we should be going through the cloud that nowadays if you see that the companies are available in abundance why because the cloud is supporting that particular business let's say if we need to create any sort of the resources we don't need to wait for purchasing those data center we can directly reach out to the provider and we can have a subscription in place and we can create our resources now the thing is if that is that easy that somebody else will be taking care of the compliance and the requirements that a business demands it will really sounds easy to set up any sort of the infrastructure as a service or a platform as a service which can meet our business needs and the demand or let's say hosting a web application spinning up a databases or let's say any respective services which we required in order to store in order to execute or in order to function our business over here so that is the reason guys nowadays if you see from last five to six years everybody is moving towards the clouds there are a lot of migration projects are happening now if that is so that if every organization is leaning or moving towards the cloud business definitely there will be more and more demands of the engineers because at the end of the day who will be going to get the job done definitely they will have more and more demands available in the market so guys that is the reason we should learn azure because initially aws was the pioneer but the thing is from last four and five years if you see the amount of the growth which has been made by azure in the market is tremendous the reason is that microsoft already have various customers and the clients all across the globe so the only thing is that the Azure that needs to provide over here is some level of the discounts. And if you compare the number of the locations that the Azure data centers are available, it's highest in comparison to AWS and the GCP. And that is the reason guys, we are concentrating on the Azure. So in front of you, what I'm just showing you just to prove the point that why we should be learning Azure that over the span of time, you can see this is the quarterly chart of each and every year that amount of the growth has been registered by Azure in cloud over here. So starting with 5.5 billion in year 2015, currently the growth is now 44 billion USD over here. So you can certainly understand guys over the span of last five to seven years, it has been exponentially increased now moving on to know that what exactly we need to know i mean that is something that we understood that okay there is a high demand but what we need to do in order to achieve the goal over here now this is regarding the architecting now when you talk about architecting any solutioning for an example a company approaches to you let's say i have a particular demand and i would like to host certain set of the web application i would like to have this much of the security and further i would like to spin up some resources some databases the execution of the pipelines and many more now we need to understand that if we are supporting any sort of the customers or any supporting clients over here what exactly their demands now if we understood the requirement what we need to do in order to provide the service so over here we required an understanding that what azure offerings 
available and how we can provide the best optimum solution because here we need to take care of the performance we need to take care of the security we need to take care of the costing requirements as well now when we talk about availability on demand now availability on demand means that over here we are designing any of these solutioning now let's say tomorrow there is a regional level outage happened for an example there were a few web application we have deployed in a particular location let's say that location was east us and we need to host certain set of the server and the databases but let's say that region goes down now in that particular situation definitely you required another site to respond at that situation so how we can go ahead and create site to site connectivity so that let's say the similar kind of a solution we have created in another location how we can bring up those services in no time so that the amount of the damage which is happening because of the resources not available how you can come out from that particular situation now as we know that azure have lot many locations available so how we can go ahead and create our disaster recovery solution or let's say if there is any corruption or any sort of the issues are happening in our servers for an example there was a problem which has been detected of a data corruption at 6 pm so if we have taken the backup of that particular server let's say around 4 pm or let's say around 5 pm how we can use that particular backup in order to restore our services back to normal or further let's say if you are taking an example of a long term retention probably we are from the analytics team now definitely if you talk about an analytics right it works on a historical data i'll give you an example guys nowadays you know you must be seeing in the news right in the company growth the economy growth is happening with this particular rate we are trying to achieve certain set of the target and we will be able to achieve in next quarter let's say take an example of the sports let's say if there are two teams playing matches against one another with the help of the analytics and the past occurrence that how these teams has played against one another and on the basis of the current form of the players you can probably predict that what will be the outcome of that particular match now these are just the layman example that i have just uh, put it across over here now in the same manner when you are working for any organization let's say my resources has been deployed and there are 100 customers that i'm serving with a particular capacity of the database and a web application and i need to know that with the help of you know the kind of the customers and the client i'm dealing with this particular rate what will be the amount i should ready with or what will be the operational cost in upcoming next quarter so that i will be able to be ready with that much of the finances and we know that what will be the operational cost and on the basis of that what will be the revenue of the organization now this is just a practical requirements over here so long term retention of the data so that we can conduct those analysis so over here guys here you can keep your backups your databases you know your retention for many days as well which can help you in order to do the analytics as well cloud migration capabilities let's say today i am running let's say 100% of my business on the on premises now if i feel like that you know i would like to conduct an analysis and on the basis of that i would like to decide what all resources that i will be able to migrate to the cloud so that i would be paying less for that resources however i am still getting the benefit of the cloud business now what are the possible benefits so initially i started my discussion that how much money an organization need to spend each and every five years or six years in order to replace the entire hardware probably replacing the entire data center now guys your data center is not an economical resource it's a very costly resource now after five years if you're going to make the changes just go back a bit back in time guys what kind of a laptops you are using right now and just compare with the laptops that we used to use seven years ago or eight years ago remember those laptops guys dual core processors that we used to have core to duo we used to have 2gb and 4gb rams right now now if you compare the currently hardware that you are using and the amount of the advancement has been done over the span of 8 to 7 years that currently i5 i7 processors are available into the market the minimum requirement of your operating system is 4gb ram and initially it was the entire size of your laptop ram that we used to have so you can certainly understand a pain of an organization when they are dealing 
dealing with hundreds and thousands of the customers and they need to replace the entire hardware there will be downtime with that there will be maintenance cost hundreds and thousands of the employee that needs to be hired only just to maintain the infrastructure now think about guys all this headache is gone for a while your provider is providing you the SLA that the uptime will be 99.9% or 99.95 or up to 99.99% as well. So we need to understand that how that kind of the high availability can be achieved with the health of the providers. <clears throat> now, if somebody else is taking care, definitely guys, you are saving a lot of money when it comes to your hardware and infrastructure deployment. We are directly using something and over here at any given point of time, if let's say the things doesn't go the way you anticipated, you can also get rid of, of the resources as well, which was not the case earlier on when we are using our on-premises resources the reason being if let's say you have purchased 5000 servers and let's say tomorrow you feel like that the business is not making as much profit that what we have anticipated initially and probably you need to get rid of probably half of those servers what you will do with those servers guys definitely guys it's a bad investment there will be a big impact on the organization on the revenue on your operational cost but over here all these kind of a thing with little bit of the planning you will be able to accomplish over here now you can take it as a profit or you can take it as a cost optimization but over here with the help of the cloud you will be able to accomplish the similar requirement with the minimum cost requirement over here now probably when you are deploying the things within the production you may need to do the testing as well so over here you can also further optimize the cost for your testing environment over here as well you can have application analytics you can have cloud bursting as well that you can auto scale any given point of time let's say on the basis of cpu utilization memory utilization let's say there are certain servers are running but suddenly if there are hundreds and thousands of the users are hitting on your web application let's take an example of the black friday sale or take an example of a christmas where hundreds and thousands of users will be abruptly starting purchasing any of the item on the servers you can certainly understand how much of the traffic it is generating on the web application now it is not going to be there for a longer period of the time probably due to the festive season it is happening now you required auto scaling over here that suddenly your resources are capable of the scaling requirement now that we call it cloud bursting over here that any given point of time you can spin up hundreds and thousands of the resources to meet the requirement and after that there will be optimization once the number of the workload has been reduced you can further reduce them as per the requirement over here so for the cost optimization and your application analytics will continuously help you knowing what your application is doing and what all changes that you have to do because guys whatever you are implementing today two years from now definitely there will be certain improvement and the improvisation will be needed it doesn't matter how good security you have implemented or how good optimization that you have done with your business definitely after certain time there will be more advanced security protocols available there will be adaptation of the technology will be needed and that's where your cloud business will come into the picture that how you can eventually increase your workloads and how you can enhance your security or enhance the performance because you may want to start the business with 100 of the customer at the moment but five years from now or two three years from now definitely there will be more clients more data think about in banking firm guys which will be increasing the customers on regular basis think about how much data a bank is holding from last 50 years or 100 years old bank now definitely in order to meet the demand you may require availability and on-demand scaling for that. Further guys, these are some of the Fortune 500 organization. You are probably been aware about all these companies and all of them are on Azure at the moment. Some of the examples are your Johnson & Johnson, BMW, Walmart, who is the number one Fortune 500 company, your Toyota. Further, you can have Samsung, Honeywell, many organization guys you must be aware about all this just to keep your trust that why we are learning azure over here because these many organizations are dealing in azure so definitely there will be high chances if you are able to crack any sort of the interviews in near future definitely there will be high chances that you will be make it through these organization because all these are working on azure platform so guys this was our expert and if you want to dive deeper then we have something really special for you 
We have our free class on how to prepare for Azure Cloud jobs and certification. Under this free class, you'll be learning about why you should learn Azure Cloud, Azure Cloud certification roadmap for cloud engineers and architects, and a lot many questions that you might be wondering about. All you have to do is just log on to k21academy.com forward slash az30502. You'll be seeing this kind of interface. Just click on book your free seat now. Schedule an event date according to your availability. Add your full name, your email address, your phone number and click on yes, save my seat. After that, you'll be seeing this kind of link on the extreme right. Add this link to your calendars and I'll see you in the free class. Till then, take care and keep learning.